Well, good afternoon. Morning's already gone by. Okay, uh, last video was we were working on uh, uh, we were working on waxes. So let's uh, get right back into that because uh, let's go to the next stage. You know, I had a couple, a little bit of feedback there about how the waxes, where the molds came from. I tried to explain that best I could. So we're gonna cast. We're gonna cast all the stuff on the bench here. Oh, and, about that. Okay, so what do we do with these first? So you get a, um, you wanna know how heavy this is so that you know how much material. You wanna know how much wax is in here so you know how much silver to use. They're gonna cast these in silver. So the, the quickest way to do that is you get your scale. Okay, uh, let's turn that on. I put some new batteries in this baby here. Oh, she's just great. Okay, so let's weigh that. Well, we're gonna put two of them in at once. So let's go that. Okay, so take your pad. And this is number one. And it's 4.4 .4 grams of wax. And so, you know, I, I, I say for the sake of conversation, wax is one. The specific gravity of wax is one. So if you were gonna make something in silver, I know it's a little bit more, it's 10.02 or something like that, it's specific gravity, uh, but I call it 10, so one to 10. So I know that I need 4.4, I know what I will need because I know the weight of the of the wax, 4.4 grams. Well, you know, we just need to move the decimal point one spot, right? So we need 44 grams of silver. And then you want, oh, maybe another 10% for the sprue button and everything, but. I usually weigh mine with the sprue on there, right? So that real is a real benefit, okay? Excuse me. So and what we and you have to you have to say what it is though. So this is number one, and it's a uh, two times standard pins, okay? And then you put S sterling silver, and you got this warmed up. You got your so let's, uh, you gotta make sure you use the right base because uh, sometimes uh, like the smaller base, I don't have the flasks for them this tall. Okay, look at that, how it's standing up on its own. Excuse me. And, and you know, double check your waxes to make sure that there's no pits or imperfections or anything like that. So let's uh And you gotta make sure around the base there that there's no sharp undercuts or things like that. You don't want those that volume of metal hitting that all at once and breaking off little pieces that are gonna go and uh, get into your castings. Okay, so that's that. So now I got all these I got all these to finish off and do. They need specific sizes, and I have this one here which is gonna be gold. So let's let's weigh this one and take our pen. So number two is uh, 0 0.3 grams. Now with gold, we know the specific gravity of 10 karat gold is uh, 11.57. So we would take uh, 0 0.3, oh, let's turn this on. 0 0.3 times 11.57 equals you're gonna need roughly three, three and a half grams of 10 carat, but we're gonna add, you know, so you add to two grams or three grams, you cast that with six grams, right? You'll cut the sprue off and we can use the gold button again later. But anyways, okay, so let's, what is it? One times a 10K gold pin, MC pin, okay? Let's get that on here and we can go invest the two of these. Okay, you guys, let's go over and invest them. Did I see it? Or did I, did you see, did you? Look at how nice it is outside, the sun shining. A little bit cold, but nice. 
Okay, guys. Maybe not. Okay, so, uh... Let's get the rings off. We've got the, uh... We've got the pieces right here. Okay, so go up to your flasks. And we need... Oh, let's try that flask there. Look at that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Get a little bit of tape. That was number one, right? So put number one on a piece of tape. Rip it off. Again. We want to extend the height of the cup that you've just made. That's like a cup, right? And because when the investment, which is the plaster that surrounds this now, starts to, when we put it in the vacuum, it's going to rise. And so if you fill it up to the top and it rises, it makes a mess. And we don't want to do, oh, look at that. Ooh. Okay, and the other one gets a little flask. This is number two. Okay. Let's get a number two on here. Some of you might say, oh, come on, Frank. I mean, you should be able to remember the big one's number one, number two. No, because now let's say I'm doing six, eight castings or something like that. And there's three or four of these little ones. How do you remember? You don't. I'm telling you, you don't. You gotta mark them. Okay, so let's get the water running a little bit. It's nice in here today. I turned up the heat a little bit. Um, and uh, the door is closed, the sun's shining in the window. I'm standing next to this. This is warm. The winter times are really nice in here. Okay, uh, what are we doing? Let's turn the water down. Get the investment out here. Let's get this up here a bit. Okay. Now, I mix I mix my investment by eye, and uh, I've been doing it for 30 years, so uh, let's just kind of get on with it. I know that some people have complained that I don't use a scale and weigh it out and everything like that. Oh, well. Okay, so I know that this flask takes... I know that this flask takes seven scoops. Uh, sorry, not, uh, seven, nine scoops, nine scoops, and that takes four. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one more. Turn the water down. Don't just stick that flow of water. You need a bit of water in there at this point here. Just put a little bit in. Okay, I'm happy with that. That looks good. And stir it for a while. That's the key to this though. You want all the, the investment all mixed in properly. Okay, you don't want any lumps in there or anything like that. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, I I vacuum my investment twice. I, I vacuum it once in a bowl, and then I pour it in. I pour it into the flask and vacuum it again. The second vacuuming, it doesn't rise as much. It doesn't bubble as much. So I just find that that's worked for me for 30 years, and that's the way I do it. Okay, I don't really shake the heck out of it. Sometimes, you know, like when it's in the bowl, I don't mind shaking it a little bit. But when it's in the flask, I don't do that. Okay, so I'll come back to you. Okay, you can see on the side here, I know I should cut in a little bit sooner, it rose. It rose that much, and now it's coming to a full rolling boil. You know what, some people, if you need to shake it, you can shake it now, but leave it alone afterwards. Okay, uh, open the valve. 
turn off the vacuum. Turn your kiln on so that you can program it a little later. Okay, look at this. Oh. Okay, where's that little flash? Well, both of these flasks, right? Okay. So let's, uh, this is a nice, look at how nice this material is. There's one. No lumps in it or anything like that. Here's number two. Right up. Look at that. <laughs> so, material you need and you get used to it after years of doing it. Okay, you guys. Uh, it's uh, at a full rolling boil. Turn it off. And uh, we're going to program this too. We're going to figure out what time it is. Uh, okay, get that off there. Take these off because I know some people, <coughs> excuse me, there's videos out there and you're not supposed to move them from, from the Vulcan, uh, from the vacuum table. Well, come on, that's not realistic. I mean, if you were in a, in a, in a shop environment, this vacuum machine's being used all day long. You can't wait half an hour for these to set up while they're sitting in there. Move them the once. Put them there, don't move them again, okay? That's pretty straightforward. So these are ready to go. So that, that's from, from the wax. I didn't even have a cup of coffee in this video. Maybe I should, maybe I should, maybe I should make a cup of coffee. And uh, what's that cup we're gonna have? Oh, Taurus. Let's get that on there. And let, which one should we use? How about, uh, how about house blend? How about morning blend? Way past morning, but you know what? Okay, so let's uh, sit over here a little bit, look at our coffee maker. That was the old jeweler sign that hung up in front of the door from the old shop. It's been beautiful today. Everything's drying out nicely. Horses are happy, goats are happy, chickens are good. They're not producing as many eggs anymore because it's cooled down quite a bit. Okay, so did you reach out to a pal? Did you uh, call somebody, go through your old Rolodex? That's, um, now I'm aging myself. Go through your list, pick somebody, call them, say hello. I'm sure they would just love to uh, hear from you. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, if you like what I'm doing, you hit the subscribe button, you hit the like button, you make a comment. It doesn't cost you anything, and it sure helps me out. I'm over 10,000 subscribers, I'm working on that, and I'm trying to get you enjoyable content fun stuff okay you guys have a great app oh i'm talking about waxes okay so you need to get your waxes all cleaned up and finished properly right so that you're happy with them now uh i didn't show the sizing of the waxes but maybe next time i will i needed a nine and a half an eleven a ten and a seven and a half that's what the customer wanted okay so size them beforehand don't size it, don't make the ring, don't cast a ring just because it came out of the mold that size and go, oh, I'll deal with it later. No, deal it. Deal with it in the wax. It's way easier. And you really should deal with them right when after you take them out of the injection, out of the mold, because they're the warmest, they're the most pliable. But I have the steamer on and I got the, uh, the ultrasound tank on. So I'll just drop this into the ultrasound tank for a few minutes and the wax will become very um, pliable. It will become very, I don't want to say soft, but it'll become where it won't, it won't be brittle. Like this wax here, if I were to grab a piece of it and show you, it, it, see how it broke? Okay. So anyways, uh, what I wanted to show you now was uh, sprueing. I wanted to sprue one of these rings for you. Now, where are we here? This one here, I want to show you. See how the top of the ring, this is the top of the ring here. It's not super thick, not super bulky. Like this one, I'm going to sprue a different way. Like that requires a lot of material up there. I'm going to sprue these like this, but I'll do those in another video. We're just doing these ones right now. So this is a, a sprueing wax. You buy it in big, you buy it in big packs, or I think they sell it. I think now it's become so expensive they 
you just say, oh, I need 10 of them and they sell you 10 of them. Anyways, that's my wax drawer. Okay, so take that and uh, I, okay, let's just uh, go like this and go put a little bit of a, a, a curve in there, a little bit off the sides a bit and go like that. That's as big as, as long as you're gonna need the sprue. And okay, I moved that in a little bit, okay? So we can see. So I cut that piece of that sprue wax. So it's got a little bit of a, and I just hold it on there like that. Doesn't help if you can't see what I'm doing. Okay. Get a little piece of this, hold it in your finger. You know, you, you know, wax well to get on there. You don't want any undercuts. Okay. Now, put turn the scale on. Turn the scale on. Maybe not. Turn the scale on. We'll put one, two of these on here. And let's uh, get one of these bases. Right. Oh. Got to mark it down. So number three, uh, 4.72 times round sterling silver. Okay. Now, I want to get two of these on there. So lay it out a little bit. One, try not to put the, uh, uh, this, if it drips wax above one of your pieces, right? Cause ruins hours and hours worth of work. <clears throat> okay. Let's get this like that. Get that like that. Look at that. Make sure there's enough room between the two of them so that, uh, Things don't break off when you're casting them. Try to eliminate any sharp corners. Center them a bit while the wax is still warm. That's okay. Okay. Be careful when you're doing this that the hot wax pen doesn't touch the side of the rings. Okay, I'm happy with that. Right? Okay, now that's going to end off this video. That's going to be long enough. I'm not going to do any horses, chickens, goats, nothing like that. We're just in the studio working away. So when you size the ring in the wax, uh, you warm it up, right? And then you cut, you cut out the piece that you want to take out and then squeeze it around the mandrel and then use the... to melt it back together and then you file it and shape it. All right, you guys.